Professor Dr. Prem eh, for the introduction. And first of all, I like to thank the university for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge uh, while I was serving with the government. That is 33 years. Uh, all my uh, service with the government is all mostly all in environmental sector. Uh, only the first seven years is in treasury, I mean, it's finance man. <laughs> the first seven years. Then I was the director general of national solid waste for seven years, in mostly about 14 years. Then KETA, Minister of Energy, uh, two years. I met Dr. Shadi when I was the director general of solid waste. Okay? <laughs> so now, um, now I'm a now I'm a corporate figure. <laughs> uh, I joined with uh, MRCB as an advisor on waste to energy, and also advised a few companies on energy related matters. Yeah. So now the UST gave me this title, Environment and Energy Management. It's a mouthful actually. Uh, it's a mouthful, but luckily they put environment and energy together. And then easy because I was spending my terms as a deputy secretary of KETA. That is in charge of energy and green tech, and also the in the uh, what do you call it uh, environment sector. Eh? Now, my presentation of course, as usual, eh? if not, if there's no uh, setting, then our discussion will be hard. Hey, wire, we go everywhere. Eh? So first, I have to put the scenario setting before we move on the government commitment. Yeah, uh, in environment energy, where are we now? Challenges market enable in conclusion. Now, now the scenario setting before it goes on to the real talk of the matter. Now, before we talk or discuss in Malaysia, eh, because a lot of you, many of you I saw from uh, foreigner, eh, in Malaysia, before you discuss management of environment and energy, you need to know the power or authority which draws the management. That's how in Malaysia it works. If it's not embedded in any uh, law, any uh, what you call policy, then you have to make the law and policy. But luckily or unluckily, environment we draw our power authority from the federal constitution. In Malaysia, there are three, three federal list, uh, state list, concurrent list, and residual. But if any of you goes into our federal constitution, you never find the word environment. What does it mean? It means that it falls under the residual list. It says that if it's not mentioned in the federal list, a concurrent list, state list, automatically falls under state purview. Environment in Malaysia. Now you're wondering how are these wild we manage environment? I think you know we have an Environmental Quality Act in terms of environment pollution. But Environmental Quality Act in Malaysia was created on the premise of public health. If you see our act, it's our, our environmental quality act, public health. Because they cannot put an environment there because that is falls under the state jurisdiction. So they put on concurrent list. Concurrent list means the state or federal government can legislate law. That's how environmental quality act comes into being. Uh, two days ago, we have a discussion with the Department of Environment to make a new law. Changing environmental quality act into environmental protection act. It may take maybe one year, two more years. Lah. Uh, you have to change. Yeah? So that's where. Eh? Uh, now, I put that. Oh, sorry. Forgot about it. Okay. Uh, wait. Uh, okay, here. Article 77, that is residual matters. Residual this, yeah? Then, energy. Because you... Energy and environment is together. But luckily for us, energy is a federal list. It's under nine, nine schedule. Nine schedule, 11C. So the government can, what it means is, government can legislate laws, regulation under federal government easily. We have an act eh? we, under the federal government. But having said that, although it's a state government, the federal government does not deal with Sarawak government on electricity. Sarawak has their own law on electricity. Although it's a federal list. In Malaysia, we practice consultation. In Sabah, we consult, they say they agree to adopt our Electricity Act. 
So electricity supply X is implemented in Sabah, but not in Sarawak. So that is the scenario there. Yeah. Now, but I will say that environment management in Malaysia we don't practice environmental protection on its own. Never. We do sustainable sustainable development. Because you see, the sustainable development has the three pillars, remember? Environmental protection, economic growth, and social development. If any one of these missing, it will be in balance. Whatever we did on environment, uh, pollution control act, what, it always has an impact on economic and social well-being. That's why we said the two pillars. Eh? So, having, after saying that, then the concept of uh, what do you call it? Sustainable construction and production kicks in. Uh, I think you know about CSP, isn't it? Uh, construction, uh, uh, what do you call it? Sustainable construction and production. This is where energy management fits in an overall perspective of environment. We, we need to know whether the production of energy, uh, production of energy is sustainable and the production. Some of us is not very sustainable in consumption. Uh, we, uh, uh, now, what is the temperature here? Cannot be 26. Uh, because in government building, you must put uh, 24. Cannot, because some, when you went to the hotel, it's worse than winter in Europe. Uh, so the consumption is not sustainable. Uh, the, the, the production, then the, no, the production is not sustainable. Consumption is worse because some. I'll tell you later how our production electricity whether is sustainable or not. Yeah. I think uh, you don't have to wait until the end of my presentation. If clarification, then you ask then there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Not, 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 not just with this very sensitive uh, remote control. Huh? Uh, okay, I think this is the one. Now, how energy management fits in the environment management? You see, I say that according to UNEP, and energy production in use is the single biggest contributor to anthropogenic greenhouse gas emission. Anthropogenic means human in use. This activity industries. Because we need qualified anthropogenic. If not, all of us will be polluters also. You bring in oxygen, you came out CO2. So that does not count. It. If not, then you have to uh, can't breathe oxygen now because you accident H2O, then go CO2. Eh? So it's only single biggest human in this greenhouse emission. See, it's not sustainable eh? energy because it creates global warming. Energy sector. Now, some people go confuse energy sector. Is it only electricity? Energy sector, it goes cars, eh? cars, uh, hydropower, our power plant production, all that sort of thing. Eh? So, this is energy production. Now, to ensure sustainable development, then you need to do the decoupling. Decoupling economic growth from environmental to go into green economies, which produce new opportunities, social creation. Later, I tell in one of the sites, I show you how can it create opportunities and social. Yeah? Now, people said developed country, you have to develop, doesn't mean anything. Yeah? You have to do. So, economic growth goes on, and economic and environmental degradation goes on. So now we need to decouple. Just for example, before you go in detail, example to decouple energy growth and environmental degradation. In Malaysia, there's a lot of coal power power plant, hmm? global warming. But then again, if we have no choice, we cannot take renewable energy sources, we go for coal. But in Malaysia, we are building ultra super critical coal power plant. We use clean coal, we call it green coal. In common, eh? a green coal, a green coal. Eh? You come in, if you green coal mean okay, if you take from Indonesia, not so green. If you take from Australia, a bit greener. So Malaysia, from Australia, 
uh, from Indonesia, from South Africa, he's from Mexican, from Russia also. You've got four countries. Huh? But Indonesia, a lot of impurities content, so not so cold. But if not so clean coal, then you have to come up with the technology because this is Unity Science and Technology, isn't it? Yours. So you can't change what God's made. Uh, but, but the God gives you knowledge to come up with technologies which can counter it. For example, wind in Malaysia, we want to build wind turbine. Huh? But they say wind turbine, the velocity of wind in Malaysia is very low. So how to do it? So I said there's two things to make a wind turbine in Malaysia successful. One, wind velocity. But if wind velocity in Malaysia is 5 meters per second, so that's God's creation. You can change that. But you can have technology where the wind turbine technology can turn electricity at a very low wind velocity. So we already get some university to do research on that. Huh? Now. Okay. Decoupling, achieving green growth. Eh? I mentioned here, sorry, I have to go down here, too small. Arena, International uh, Renewable Energy Association. Eh? They say that in the Gulf, who's from the Gulf country? Uh, no, I thought I saw a few. Uh, no Gulf, eh? Gulf country said, in Gulf countries, the target in 20, 2030 alone with the renewable energy, if they use solar, everything, they can create jobs over 240 direct jobs and 210,000 people involving in renewable. That's 20 alone. So it create, it create market for this renewable energy. Eh? And then in Dubai, in, in Dubai, the renewable energy solar is only 5.85 US cent per kilowatt hour. 5.8 sign. Malaysia average 38.35 cent per kilowatt hour. But that was uh, in, 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 in USD. But time by four, if last time 2 point something, it would be much better. And so that is where the sustainability of energy management to go from traditional fossil fuel to renewable energy. That's how we manage in Malaysia. Later, when I go to Malaysia scenario, this overall scenario, yeah? Okay. Uh, in, in, the, in the US, 6 to 14 cents, most of the same. Uh, uh, better. Uh, Malaysia, although the US don't like uh, global, global warming, but they still do good things. <laughs> okay. This is Green Technology Master Plan of Malaysia. In that master plan, in 2030, the green business will contribute 1.5 nation GDP, increase from 7.9 million billion to 60 billion. That's what sustainability is. sustainability is. Environmental protection, social and economics. Social, of course, it creates uh, job opportunities, it creates greater income, it creates more finance uh, production for the countries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Malaysian, uh, uh, this industry should take note, science and technology. Contribution and green technology by sector, energy is the biggest one. So, uh, uh, the stop management, maybe when the PhD student come and propose research proposal, if Malaysian, uh, if non-Malaysian, uh, for now they do according to their own country uh, interest. But in Malaysia, you see, you must have some the contribution green tech from energy sector, water, waste, these two. Uh, for the GDP, is the biggest sum. So, the government is looking into science and technology. How? How to uh, renovate uh, energy sector and waste energy to provide the necessary GDP growth? Using science and technology. Uh, that's why when uh, Dr. Shadi said, come and talk to you. Uh, okay, because I saw the word... University of Science and Technology. That's why I come. <laughs> because you need to 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 to, what, to emphasize how important science and technology is. Okay. So how does energy production and management and also uh, uh, what you call it environment interface? Look, if you use a fossil fuel, you 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 you. Uh, what you could 
I mean greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases related with climate change, environment, negative impact. Then renewable energy. When you use a solar, wind turbine, hydro, you conserve resources. So less greenhouse, better environment. That is where you 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 what you have to balance the production as mentioned there and the consumption and product. You consume if you don't have renewable energy, you consume coal, you consume gas, uh, uh, what about your uh, hydro for your power plant? But if you change to renewable, the consumption is renewable. Where you use solar, you use what water, uh, water uh, hydro, big question mark also. How oh, big, big hydro, small hydro, we is sustainable. Some says it's only those uh, hydro power plant we generate thirty megawatt is sustainable. Bigger, not sustainable to the environment because it create methane gas to the uh, inundation of there. They say maybe 15 years when the environment is stable, the dam amount, then only the energy from hydro is sustainable. There's a lot pro and cons on that. If not, the Chinese see gorgeous dam. So huge, yeah. <laughs> okay. Then, waste to energy. Waste. In, in Kuala Lumpur alone, 3,000 solid... When I say waste is solid waste, rubbish. So we, we use solid waste, a more sexy. If not, I become the DG of rubbish. Uh, so I become the Director General of Solid Waste. It's nicer to hear. <laughs> so when we use waste to energy plant, uh, incinerator, gasification, blah, blah, then you avoid landfill. Then you avoid methane emission. Methane is 32 times than CO2, the global warming potential. So, better environment. Eh? But the game changer is new technology, R&D, solar, geothermal, net, net energy metering. I, I don't know, uh, you are aware that government is pursuing net energy metering. Where uh, they use, uh, what do you call it, smart meters. Eh? They can control, uh, they can advise you remotely remotely how much energy you want to consume yeah, that's net energy metering the government is rolling out that soon but it's still under studying because net energy metering is not only the equipment but because it's used on ICT radio wave frequency how which, which type of frequency you want to use if a flat land flat area net, no building what type of frequency if a building right, because sometimes it uses radio frequency then the meter can't read because later nobody comes and knock to your door to check your meter. They can check from HQ or TNB. So all these are technologies. Eh? All these are technologies. Eh? See? Now, you should be happy here, you at UST. Uh, must should be happy because in the Peter Thompson, President of General Assembly, said in last year, yeah, May, May last year, today is almost May. Transformative power of science innovation technology is clearly, abundantly clear. With all, if properly done, all this technology, science and innovation can take us the solution required achievement of all 70, I think you know, huh? sustainable development goal by 2020. That's the president, Peter Thompson said. Yeah. Now, some of the students here might be wondering, because maybe some of you are not in sustainable development goal. So I put one slide there. These are sustainable development goals listed by the United Nations. Yeah? 17. Now, Peter Thompson, the president says, if you use science, innovation, technology, we can solve all this. So the scientists say what? You have to dispute whether what you say right or wrong. And I put you the hammer there. That is the one that is important to our topics today. Because I don't think so. Uh, what do you call it? This all gender equality. Is there any gender equality on, <laughs> on SAT? <laughs> so we are talking this. Eh? We have, sorry, my spec not so good. So affordable, solar gig, eh? construction, all this. Sustainable cities and then, and also these are. 
sustainable concentration. So these are the sustainable development goals. Yeah? So with all the scientific and innovation methods, we can move and proceed. Okay. One and a half hour, yeah? Until 12, yeah? So I think I'll leave half an hour to, yeah? Okay, now, we can talk and talk and talk if the government does not put in place the policy that we can talk. The, 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 the people sometimes don't understand why should people, why should the government control putting up laws and regulation, law and regulation. If the government don't put laws and regulation and policy, you'll be everywhere. Huh? Uh, you don't have focus. So you'll be everywhere but nowhere. Here and there, here and there, because you don't have focus. Yeah? So the government said, okay, I use the 11 Malaysia plan. That is the latest government development plan in Malaysia. The 11 Malaysia plan is supposed to end by 2020. So there's two force, energy and, uh, energy and environment. There's two main chapters. Chapter 6 and Chapter 7, you look at that. Now, the Malaysian plan is actually a guidance not only for the people, community, but also private sector, industry and commercial. It's like you come, you, you buy a land, if you don't go to the local authority, you don't see the planning, you buy your land there, very expensive, beautiful scenery, and only five years time, LRT is on top of you. A lot happened. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't go and see the local planning to buy houses. We thought, nice place, buy it. But you don't know, government already makes some planning. MRT going to, so there's a lot of houses, you see, beautiful houses. MRT come right at their door. So, 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 so this is so policy planning. If you know what is the government's plan, policy in the development plan, especially students here who are going to venture in business sector, industry sector, they know what to do. If the government committed a few percent renewable energy, then you know where to go. Uh, right now, people are looking solar. Government already put up the solar. I don't know where the business sector here. We are doing utility scale solar, where we tender every year twice or three times. If you win that tender, 10 megawatt, 15 watt, you can shake your leg for another 21 years uh, because you got a concession uh, where the TNB pay you all the while for another 10 to 12 years. So now, they say green growth is a game changer not because it's standalone strategy, but it encompasses the three pillars that I, I said just now. Eh? The three pillars of all that. Yeah? Now, to pursue, to pursue green growth, that I mentioned just now, and the environment is that you must to put in place policy framework, green town investment, financial instrument. All this must be put in place. If not, how you manage environment and uh, energy does not follow a true a pathway, a clear pathway, and focus pathway. Eh? Focus pathway. Yeah? Now, under the signature plan, they said the strategy is for this to be in place, you must create. Environment geospatial information indicators. Maybe some of you geospatial information system. That's a new thing. When I left Ministry of Energy, we are coming up with a with law and policy in geospatial. Now, what is geospatial? Some of our students mentioned now geography is not the is not important already. No more study. Last time during my time, we are the what before Medica era. Uh, we learn geography. We know America better than the Americans. Now you know nothing uh, because it's not a compulsory already. Geospatial is a combination of ICT and geography. It's a new in thing that. Uh, that's why the government specially put indicators and information system. Geospatial, yeah? Wait, yeah? Sorry. Now. In UN itself already recognized the importance of, I don't know, you uh, must have this area. Huh? But in UN, in 2014, actually, that geospatial, they say we cannot measure or monitor settlement over time because without geography, location, and places. Before the geospatial information, if you want to boost a solar, you have to go down, you have to check. Huh? But we, geospatial, you're using technology 
GIS, GPS, satellite monitoring, you know, you know that area that you want to choose for energy, for power plant, in detail, you won't make, you make, a, you won't make a mistake because you will know there uh, in Malaysia, where is the best to build a solar panel plant. You just can't simply build in one in Johor, in one in Malacca. According to the research, northern is the intensity of heat light, good for solar. You can build in, in, in Johor, but instead of you getting eight days, uh, uh, 15 days per month, you've got maybe 10 days per month. So the money come in is affected, yeah? So this. So consistent process is important in predicting, monitoring, and many of global challenges, right? including the see, climate change, disease, disease all these are all these are using uh, geospatial information. Okay. Okay. I hope you can follow me. Yep. Uh, I don't professor, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Because these are what in the ambits of the government. Because the government in Malaysia, the, the, the problem with we, we government servant, we keep information to ourselves. That's a problem. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, uh, if they do studies, if they call uh, mass to, to do uh, R and D, it's a study, very good thick book. It's in their library. Uh, <laughs> they don't give to all people. Uh, I don't know why. But in our department last time. If I ask Mas to, Mas to do a study for us, I tell them, look, after the study is completed, you watch out, it will be on the website. It will be what, and then you under peer review. If you give us nonsense result, of course, we got something we didn't know. But, but when it's on the website, Professor Prem might look at it. Uh, some Professor Shachar Shach Shach may look at it. What? This, this ministry engaging uh, consultant, all nonsense. All the data is fake. So, so I told the consultant to work for us. You do that, you are surely blacklisted. But if all the industry say, oh, very excellent. So you are already in our list. So that's how, that's how we do things. Huh? Uh, now, huh? now, huh? maybe last time we are afraid people scrutinize us for our studies. Maybe we got a half past six consultants to do job for us. So if it's not let the world knows they got free scot free of getting a bad report now focus b just now i said focus area a focus d it adapting sustainable consumption at this you see increasing share of renewable energy mix by exploring new re we need to go on new renewable i don't know you heard about joe tomo uh joe tomo uh ocean technology uh uh, Otex, I think Prophet Jaffa, uh, Abu Jaffa, Abu Jaffa, then geothermal in Malaysia, they try to do geothermal. We approved one geothermal in Sabah. Oh, but it was a very expensive job. I don't think so, they move on. Uh, because we gave them FIT on that. Really geothermal is like drinking oil and gas, the Gulf Strait. You drive in, you strike, you reach. But you dig in, waste 5 million US dollar, no geothermal energy there. Another whole thing. So that's why increasing energy. Yeah? Now, encouraging low carbon through utilization energy efficient vehicles. That's how we manage the environment. Energy efficient vehicle, EEV. Some people talk about EV. Some people talk EEV. Uh, both are being addressed by the government. EEV and also EV. Uh, EV. Those EV, of course, is the car of the future. Yeah? For your information, we're coming up a lot, many, many, uh, what do you call it, charging station. You saw? Some are private, some are government under MGTC. We'll be ready. So that if the EV comes in, they, they can say, what's the government role? You ask us to use EV, but the charging station, every 300 kilometers. Then some scientists is clever. They always have a good excuse. Come on lah. you cannot drive one night, one day, 300 kilometers, only 100 kilometers, when you go home, you charge, because you can only charge at home, very easy, to trip in black, charge, 8 hours charging, tomorrow, full back, so what, you need a 100 kilometer charging station every now, 
Tesla. Ah, the Tesla car. One charge can go about 360 km. From Kuala Lumpur to Sungai Petani or Alostar, one charge. They told me only 17 ringgit for the charging bill. 17 ringgit. You put petrol, 300 ringgit. So 17 ringgit, 300 ringgit, you want to use EV or not? But you need half a million to buy that car first. <laughs> Later, economy of scale. <laughs> so, okay, now. Managing waste has to through better coordination. These are circular economy. Huh? There's also one good title for a PhD thesis. Circular economy in the waste sector. Huh? So now managing waste holistically because that's why I, I'm now with MRCB to look into waste to energy plant. Uh, to advise them on building of waste to energy plant. Huh? So this is managing using waste as a resource. Yeah. Okay, this one. This are that just now is under chapter seven. Huh? Although it's a Malaysian case, but it can always be related to your own country experience. How to, uh, if you are uh, short of you, fine. Uh, but if you are better than you, then we can a comparison. Now this chapter seven, sustainable use, managing, see managing diversity in twenty twenty twenty. Yeah, this is our. Generation Nick, uh, I think these are kilowatt hour, uh, uh, giga, 52% coal, 29. Now, you'll be asking me, I'm talking for environment and energy, sustainable development, 53% coal. Our Prime Minister goes to Copenhagen, says we want to reduce our greenhouse gases 45%. Policy again, one, reduce greenhouse gases, and another one, use coal. We are playing a balancing game here. Balancing game. Uh, why? Then they say, why Malaysia say one thing and do another thing? But coal is one of the cheapest right now yet. And that is what I was mentioning about science technology. Science technology. Okay, 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 fine. Don't, 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 uh, don't hit us. Said, we use coal, but we also clever. Our coal power plant, we use ultra super critical in Manjong. Manjong power plant, we use ultra super critical which can pulverize the coal and ensure that uh, there's less emission of greenhouses gas the pollution is being controlled uh, ultra super critical but it's expensive but if you want to balance as you say balancing games then you have to do that if not if not we get hit in the uh, climate change convention for doing this now just now land uh, x Land Act doesn't work. Uh. Now money talks. No money, no talk. So the government has to come out with this. Budget lah. Budget. Budget is not for fun of it. For example, uh, uh, Mas, eh? Green Technology Finance Scheme to Bourbon Investment Green Energy. Five billion on top of additional one. These are Green Technology Finance Scheme to Bourbon Investment. You have to go to MGTC to get it. If you don't know the government has put up this money, then you investor or industry, you have to use your own money totally. But if the government has put this, then is those bad good proposal will get it because it's one to one sometimes. Eh? Yeah, this is the one. The government has put in this. Now, because I, the rest I won't look, I look into energy. Energy or supply six seven two. The rest are this, the, all the money, the rest. So, if the government has put up this, in the, any government in the manager of thing, they must put in money. And they must put in the program in the, in the plan, uh, like this budget 208. If there's no such money in the budget, you can move. There's some government agency, sometimes they, uh, they, lost, they lost sight on that. They forgot to put in the budget that year. If you don't have, people said, object kepala, the heading in the budget book, if you don't have that, how good your plan is, you won't take off. Then you have to, next year, then they keep on telling the officers, remember, remember next year, put in the budget, 2019. You forget again, good plan won't work. It's lost in papers. Usually, sometimes we do, we're too busy doing things, 
uh, fighting fires, you forget the planning. The money, you forget the money. So if you don't have the money, do that, then you recognize, or, or if this guy want to sacrifice 1.4 billion, give you some. You think I want to give you? I say, I also don't have enough in 1.4 billion. Okay? Now, we can talk. Uh, we always, Malaysia always says that our, our, our forest cover 80%. Our tree cover 80%, forest cover 50%. Last time, last time you say that, anybody say, okay, okay. Because there's no technology then. They think my word lah, I got 80%, you know. Then now, with the remote sensing, the satellite, come on, come on, come on, you look, satellite NOAA, you all, you said it's green, it's all brown, you know. So where's your 80%? You just, so energy, to have knowledge and data is very, very important. I have a problem when I was in the ministry. I said, we, we have uh, the UN agency wants us the list of names, expert in uh, wastewater, for example. I said, yes, yes, we have a lot of us. We've got university here, university there, on the department. Okay, give us the name. Apa, yeah? You can't get the name also because you don't have the data. University have a lot but they don't have the data, then you won't be able. So that's important, the scenario is. Let's see, yeah? Hold on. Okay, are we? Okay. In terms of environmental management, sorry, yeah? Okay, in terms of environmental management, we depended, we depended on environmental performance index by Yale University. Uh, that is the uh, the reliable most uh, index that we use. Uh, so the environment, the environment performance index ranks, yeah? ranks in that, uh, the, 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 the country's performance in two areas. Human health and protection of ecosystem. It's a very specific. Uh, Yale University has been used many, many years already, University Yale Index. So in these two policy, ecosystem and health, they have more than 20 indicators, eh? 20 indicators. Eh? So that's how they merit you, they merit. Now, we take for example from Malaysia. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. This is what I say just now. Huh? You go to Yale University website, they have this. 2016. Remember, I was environmental height, ecosystem variety. All these are. They got environmental, uh, what do you call it, risk exposure, household quality, air pollution, all this. All country in the world will have, will have the same index. Uh, because I can measure uh, Professor Prem, different criteria, and Dr. Shari, it must be the same. The same. This, this other thing, yeah? Now, where's measure? 63 of 80. This is our score. 2016, yeah, 2017 has not come out. So some of you country here, maybe you can search. Of course, the best is the Scandinavian. The Scandinavian is excellent. 90, Iceland, all the Scandinavian. Uh, UK also goes on number 12. But I think we are the best in South Asia, maybe. Yeah. Singapore, alamak, 14. <laughs> 14, ours is 62, 63. Now, you wondering, are we that bad? in the management of energy environment. Are we that bad? Now, that's why I say just the indicator, the creator, you must know what they measure. Huh? This is how we are measured. How ecosystem, drinking water, blah, 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 all this. See? This is how every country is measured. This is for Malaysia case. This is excellent. Access to electricity. Malaysia in Semenanjung, about 99% people electricity. In Sabah Sawa, 95, 96. But overall, 99, this, this, this is the peninsula, this is uh, the uh, east, uh, east state, uh, penetration. You see? But then, but then, I was mentioning frost cover. Imagine, non available, non available. So I was telling our people, hey, come on, non available. I thought we always tell the world 80%, 50%, but they put an A. Of course, we have no point there. So your 
You're writing it down. Nitrogen, uh, who's, who's good in nitrogen balance here? Zero. Who's good in uh, all this? All this. Yeah. Climate change energy, so we don't know. Uh, so this one, of course, we always good. Uh, because, we, because we have a haze every day. Uh, so you must be good. Uh, so we have so good. Uh, so these are, uh, when they calculate all this, Malaysia goes number 63. Malaysia being Malaysia, uh, we never agree this is bad. So we go, we said, we come up with Malaysian EPI. We have a Malaysian EPI, but that's not like everybody take it out. <laughs> Malaysian EPI. We do the NRE and UKM did it. Different parameter, a bit. But they go and talk with you and with Yale. This is how we want to measure Malaysia. So there's two, like, one under the Yale indicator and that's our own. Which, which Ministry of Natural Resources said, it reflects a better Malaysian environment. Uh, so, that's why I said the indicator criteria must be good. Yeah? I'm not saying Yale is wrong. I said that is the parameter that they use. It's our fault if you can get this. If you got this, 80% of our forest cover, sorry, you have to make differentiate. Forest cover and tree cover. Forest cover is our virgin forest. That's 50%. Tree cover, it goes into the rubber, together with the rubber, rubber tree. The UN then don't recognize our palm oil tree, palm tree, because palm tree is not, it's not forest to them. Oh, yeah, because if you conclude, include that, you get more than that. If not, the dates is coming. Uh, the dates tree, palm, but they only consider rubber tree as forest, not palm oil tree. Uh, so that's different. Yeah? Okay, any question? Not yet? Okay. Now, these are internationally. Uh, okay. Now, how is Malaysia? This is uh, from uh, EPU, uh, from the Department of Standard uh, Statistics. Because in Malaysia, Department of Statistics is the one who who are entrusted uh, by Malaysian government for the United Nations to provide all the data. Now, you see, under SDG, we have 17 goals. Eh? Under system target, yeah. Remember the title, the title just now, environment energy, but environment only constitutes 20%. Of SDG go later. But 56 social economy. Ah, so that's why we are not talking environment protection. We bring sustainable development, so we take all this in. Yeah? So when we did our uh, what are, uh, our indicators, uh, indicators, you see? Available 30%. Partially available, 30, uh, poorly, uh, not available, not applicable. If you have don't have a good data system, data storage, you won't be able to do your measurement. I, I think, uh, same exam also. Uh, you have to have a system of marking. Then you know the student is good in the paper. Same is here. If you don't have all that, you are at a disadvantage to evaluate yourself. Uh, must be clear can be measured. Ah, the most important in, in the government was it can be measured. Some people were so uh, high upon the heaven, they just put in anything, but when you ask to measure, don't know how to measure. You must have a measurable how to measure it, then you can be come up with an indicator. Uh, uh, how to measure, they said, CO2, you need to calculate CO2. If you don't even know how much CO2 or greenhouses is being emitted by the power station, by the landfill, then what's the point putting up that? Only you use a default formula. Malaysia usually default formula. Uh, the you, 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 Europe default formula, US default formula. We don't have our own. That's why we are looking at it. Uh, TMB is looking at it. The, our formula for uh, emission. Eh? Now, having said that, challenges. Huh? The challenge. What are the challenges in, in managing environment and also energy? Negative perception does not does not goes in tandem with economic growth. In the early 90s, I was Minister of Environment. I have my colleague from Ministry of State meeting. We are always log ahead, either at uh, domestic or international. 
they don't agree us to tighten up our environmental regulation and standards. They said, if we stand it, nobody comes to Malaysia to open up their business. Now this, no. These international industries, they wanted better standards because it's image. Because they are reporting, they are reporting, because they got better, then they come in. It's no longer, no longer cheap labor. We said cheap labor. That's why our stack, our stack, our approach of bringing in investor, all that. Malaysia has very cheap labor. Malaysia utility bill is very cheap. No wonder we can increase our electricity bill. Because we always say to the industry, our tariff is low. Come in. Our pay, our, our what do you call it, our workers, only small amount of salary they needed. Come, come. You, you don't buy that anymore. The industry want infrastructure, a good infrastructure, uh, consistent electricity supply. In Sabah, we have a problem there, right? There's a lot of these uh, blackout. Huh? In Beijing, a factory, if they break out, break out 10 minutes, the whole of product, they throw. Uh, we already said, no, our blackout only, only 10 times. Uh, 10 times is good enough. Lah. And duration, the duration is still 10 times, uh, 10 times, 30 minutes each. So, one year. Okay, right? But the factory said, hey, if you have 10 times, uh, 20 times also, but if your, your, your stop blackout only one minute or so, and you have many, it's better you have half an hour blackout only three times a year. Then one minute for uh, 10, 30 minutes, uh, 30 times, 40 times. Because the duration is wanted. One second, one minute, 10 minutes, it's the same, they have to stop. One stop, whatever material in the process, gone. So, environmental protection does not move that yet, no. The better you have environmental protection, the better economic growth is. Remember I was telling just now, uh, the renewable all that? Uh, you, you, you produce electricity, uh, you produce electricity for industry, and yet you does not destroy the environment. Because you, you don't use your fossil fuel, you that. Yeah? Uh, you, you can ask me the, uh, the question, right? Uh, 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 one year, Germany in 20, 2016, one day, 100% from renewable energy, none from fossil fuel. One day, German, uh, one single day, no fossil fuel. So, ammo protection is better because when no fossil fuel, they save a lot of importation of oil and oil. Because German does not produce like us, it's not that. So that's the way. Eh? Then also Sweden. Sweden now import rubbish. Because their waste management is so good that they incinerate their solid waste to produce electricity power wholly. So much so that they don't have enough waste. So they ask Denmark, UK especially, UK from UK, send their rubbish to Sweden. They don't get the rubbish, they call it new resources. Instead of getting coal, which is expensive, rubbish people want to throw. Now, if coal, you have to pay to get it. Rubbish, I pay you to take my rubbish. Hmm. So it's two different economic mechanics. Uh, one, you pay. One, people pay you. Get it. Of course, I people pay, I take. Uh, and then I can generate electricity. I got do payment. That's, uh, okay, this, this is uh, in Malaysia for your this, this one we are a bit headache. Lah. We want people to buy more cars. Because we don't have a uh, good connection, by car, by car, we're getting the car smaller, smaller, uh, so they can move up. Uh, a lot of people cheaper, cheaper. But then again, each of these cars produce greenhouse gases. So now what? There's car transportation policies. Then we have, I mentioned just now, uh, global warming. Reduce, reduce global warming, build more coal power plants. Uh, but, but of course, luckily we have this coordinating committee to address this. Yeah. Data question needs to be centered. Yeah, this one, this one is most important. All the developed countries have a very good data correction storage need. We don't have, we don't have a systematic collection. 
If you ask the university, I last time I have, uh, I don't mention about in biodiversity, we want to have uh, storage uh, uh, for all the number of type of plant, but what each other professor has their own collection, you know. Oh, I got no need, no need. I got take from drawer. See? You? But we thought of collecting these and put into a single inventory. Uh, but sometimes people don't want to share because knowledge are power. Right? Last time they say knowledge is power. Now knowledge is sexy. The more knowledge you have, people come to you. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, data collection. And data collection sometimes the method of collection also is not correct. So that's where the academics. The academics must come in. But academics, academics, you must work together with the, with the people on the ground. If not, your system does not work for these industries. Because they know what they ha they're having. Uh, because now, now they are doing the equality, equality regulation hmm? for palm oil, milk. But palm oil milk, sir, on the ground, they have some problem. But so, because the OE, they have their own, uh, what they are expert. But not all the others. They take from university, 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 the so-called professor, professor. Yes, I don't mind. Yours is very good in academic. But, that's why some university, they have this uh, investor arm, yeah? Investor arm, they do research, they do give services. So they combine their academic knowledge and what's on the ground. Then this lecturer, these researchers can come out a hybrid of what they thought they learned from the books and what they're happening on the ground. Because each on the ground is totally different. Because the textbook is standard generic. Uh, so that's important. Yeah? Now this environment uh, management, I don't think so we can solve it. We have to move. Mm, initially, my PhD is on this. Initially. Then, at the end of the day, the signing is always you can change the constitution, the one, so forget about the PhD, use different title. <laughs> Got a different, I, my PhD is on multilateral environmental agreement, uh, climate change, uh, all this. So, these are the challenges, how move. If you, you see, the destination here is here. If you can go to state law, you can always circumvent. That's where the ingenuity of the scientists, uh, the technologies, and also the administrator. Don't leave out the administrator, the management. Uh, they, although they are not so good in their scientific, but they know how to find out things that the, the scientists, uh, uh, the technologists didn't look at that. I'm a scientist, so I'm a biologist. Sometimes we have one track of mind. The managers, they have ways of doing things, go here, go here, they get where you are. Uh, so, you must equip that one. Opportunities, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, got a few more minutes, more. Okay. Okay. These are our green technology master plan. If you don't know our master plan, how you are going to do energy energy management? You need to know. Sector, renewable energy, energy efficiency. In renewable energy, these are the tar target. We want 20% RE mix, 33% install capacity. RE mix. Or Bakun dams, 2,400 megawatt. Our, we have a, a, big, a big dam in Sarawak. The Bakun Dam, huh? 2,400 megawatt hydro. Hmm? Uh, so, we are going to mix it. That's why, if you look into uh, Energy Commission website, I think they are going to tender again for this utility scale solar. Every year, Malaysia wants to build about 1,000 megawatt. No, uh, 200 in Semenanjung, 50 in Sabah, Sabah, large scale solar, large scale solar. Ah, uh, so those who are interested, who are commercially inclined, uh, some of the professors also some they have inclined. You know what? They put up proposal, go into the tender to build between one megawatt to fifty megawatt. You got it? Hmm. Good. And then you see this reduction of electricity cost. This is about efficiency. I was talking about net energy metering, smart grid. These are all efficiency, uh, not renewable energy. It's on the system. Huh? Reduction, yeah? 
See, I quote some of uh, from overseas, China. They were, in fact, in, they already surpassed the one of five gigawatt solar installation. I thought uh, a few years ago the Japan has the biggest uh, solar panel, floating solar panel. I think China already overtake them already. Eh? Japan, solar move, let's get, I see. This one, see, you, you know that we have a fit in tariff? Have you looked into your electricity bill? Who look into their electricity bill or your father pay? Electricity bill, there is percentage there, 1.6%. Fit in tariff, fine. Where for every uh, what uh, money that you put for your bill, the government tax you 1.6%. Ah, because maybe you're all about 30 ringgit, 40 ringgit, you didn't see that. But for those one million, uh, for the industry, they, they look at it. Because 1.6% on top of the bill, they charge 1.6% on top of that, goes to the government to pay for renewable energy. That's where FIT. But in Japan, when they stop FIT, they stop, you see the financial incentive, it can be good and bad. When they stop fitting tariff, Automatically in Japan, they go for this. Large scale utility. Large scale utility, they don't, they don't use the money they take from us. They use power purchase agreement. They discuss with the utility. Ah. Fit tariff, fit uh, for your patient, for fit in tariff, which is administered for SEDA, sustainable development, is uh, for five types of renewable energy biogas, biomass, mini hydro, uh, solar, already stopped last year. Then geothermal. It means you say, if I'm a proposal for to build a, a geothermal plant, the government agreed for my plant, then they pay me through the fit in tariff that they collected. But we have discussed how much upfront. Say, for example, for one megawatt, you pay me 80 cents, for example. So for the next 16 years, I get a confirmed business. How much? Megawatt, we, I, I, I release, I discharge, they pay me. That's the money there. Uh, so now they turn to Indonesia, so Malaysia is the key market, yeah? See? Now, each policy has an impact for another policy. When FIT ends, they go for battery storage system. You see the solar panel, solar panel, in Malaysia, it does not stand on its own. It goes to the grid, <coughs> national grid. They connect. If I don't produce, for example, I'm supposed to, to produce 50 megawatt for my solar plant. That day, I only managed to send in 30 megawatt. TMB comes in immediately to put the 20 megawatt. But, of course, they charge you. And you receive the 20 megawatt. Right? So that's how it works. Uh, it is, we don't have individual grid yet, all in the national grid. Only in Kedah, Kulem, they got a different grid. You're familiar with Kulem Technology Park in Kedah? That city is not produced, it's not supplied by TNB. It's by a company, Nur. They charge all the industry there and pay to Nur. Ours, TNB. Ah, you only got. This, this part, I think, I think you don't realize on that. Uh, that's new, yeah? So now, battery storage, these are, these are about battery storage. People were busy doing EV. People were doing solar. But those smart people who don't have the money, they go for battery storage. Come on with a good technology on battery storage. Because in a solar plant, without a battery storage, you cannot, you cannot store the energy in the day. So it can be used maybe in the net for hours with the energy battery storage. That's why it makes uh, the EV vehicle is still not really commercial viable for because of battery storage. Uh, the car you need a battery storage to make it more. If the battery storage is not good, that's why I say you can go. You can go only 200, 100 kilometers because the, the battery storage is not good. So the technology now, while people are busy build the, uh, building the EV, some other people sector are building battery, come up with battery. Uh, that is a, because a, lot of, uh, a lot of solar plants being built in Malaysia. They use inverter, battery, all that, yeah? 
Okay. Oh, just now uh, didn't show this answer. So I think okay, it's the same. Okay. Opportunity in the waste sector. Just now in the waste sector. See? These are all energy by renewable. 280 megawatt in 23. There is, there is solid waste, there is biomass, biogas, mini hydro, and solar photo waste. You see, it falls from 66% to 9%, but the biomass increased. Solid waste here, not so much, is going to. So these are, these are how the management of energy in Malaysia is, how they foresee, uh, but these are electricity, you know, yeah? production. Okay, market enabler. To promote all this, then you have to have a market enabler. Yeah, all right. Okay. Have you heard of the green procurement? Government green procurement. Huh? Well, the rest of the students, huh? Malaysia has embarked on government green procurement. Uh, all government contracts, you need to be certified as green product, but we don't do all. We got a few projects. For example, we have cement in the government contract. Cement, we need a green cement. It's not the color is green. Eh? <laughs> Some people got confused. They put a green building, green building in there, green. No, it's a process how you make the cement. Either the process is good, environmentally friendly, or the source of the cement is green. So what's the implication of this? If you don't have all this, you cannot go into government contract. Government contract is one of the biggest business in the country. Housing, low cost housing, prima, prima, all that is government contract. So if you don't have a green cement, how you want to build a house? Eh? Then if you provide gen sanitary services for building, janitor. Also green. Uh, some people say, I, I have got green. A green uh, detergent, green. So what is green actually? Hey, where to find this green detergent? And you can not. You can't, you don't know where to get the green detergent. You cannot enter all the government buildings. You cannot provide cleaning for the whole of the building. Green detergent. Environmentally friendly detergent. We have the list in MDTC. That's why. Green incentive. Green incentive. Have you heard the guitar and guitar? It's not a single lah, kan? <laughs> green investment tax allowance. Green investment tax exemption. A lot of the industry does not have that. It's also a good title for uh, PhD and Masters. Uh, maybe Masters. How does green investment tax allowance or green investment tax exemption work in Malaysia to spearhead green technology? Green incentive, green cities. Innovative, innovative funding. Uh, innovative funding, I mentioned just now, the FIT. Green in tariff is innovative funding. Uh, one of that. There's many more. Eh? All right? Okay. I go for my conclusion. Eh? Ah, you get 45 minutes, so much better to have in track here. Eh? We, to make sure we're in track, we always say that clear and measurable indicator must be in place. That one is a uh, it's a requirement. If not, we cannot break ourselves. We are good. If you don't have the mechanical, then sign anthology is a tool for measurement indicators. I don't say that. Malaysia don't say that. It's the UN say that also. I think you all know. If not, you could have. If Edison is not there, you don't have the light. Eh? Well informed. Now, well informed mission, of course, um, top management and university, uh, and also in Malaysia, eh, uh, the government ministry. Well informed decision making ensures suspension. Sometimes we make information, you, you see, a lot of, it's not that I want to criticize the government, sometimes we did policy. A few months ago, policy, today the policy come out, tomorrow the policy being withdrawn. It's half cooked. Half cooked. When you policy, we have consultation. I think the missing element is the consultation. That's why you don't have well-informed decision making. Because now I'm the chairman of the environmental consultant and companies. So my member said, my God, what are they doing? It's not 
acceptable to us. You cannot implement this. It's terrible. So we gave a meeting. Now we open up a discussion. It's good on paper, but that's not the real thing. Industry, commercial. So what informed decision making must be there. If not a flip flop decision by the government and also by the top management of must also have must have this. Uh, we cannot do. They say uh, the day the government knows best is over. The no, the day those top management of administration knows best is over. Uh, you have to hear from top bottom. That time is top bottom. Now bottom must hear. If not, you won't be successful. Yeah. So that is my presentation today. I hope it's useful and give for thought for the R and D in. PhD research and also the master's research. Thank you very much. Question? Uh, yeah. We have my pen. Okay, never mind. One by one first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for your information. So, I'm from Vietnam, so I have the problem. Uh, in Vietnam. Vietnam. Yes. In Vietnam, we have about a, a nylon bag using, so very popular in the Vietnam. But then, what? Nylon bag using the nylon, the plastic bag. Oh, plastic bag. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Sorry. So, very popular in Vietnam. So, but then come here in Malaysia, uh, I see not many people they use nylon bed, right? Mm. So, uh, but the Malaysian tourists, when they come to Vietnam, they use the nylon bed more than they use it in the Malaysia. Okay. So, with uh, your experience, can you share with me about how about the government in Malaysia, they control about this one? Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. That's, that's actually, uh, okay, uh, when I was the Director General, we have this problem also. One of the big issues of plastic bags. Uh, Malaysian Plastic Station in Malaysia says the bag is not the fault. It's human at fault. If you see all these plastics, circular plastic bottle, huh? some, some, some universities don't use this already. They, 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 they move around with the, what do you call it? The can. Ah, then they talk, blah, 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 and. but some people say it's not hygienic ah, because they don't know from which water they take so they're confident with this but this bottle this bottle is very expensive resources for the industry this this is more expensive than this but most of you sold it send it together those clever one they split it this one they sell differently this one they sell separately this one costs better than this but you all don't know <laughs> So now, in Malaysia, hmm? in Malaysia, the bottle set with the aluminum can, uh, uh, bottle, it's not an issue actually. You can't find the street so much because people collect it, there's a market. If you want to be successful in plastic addressing, eh, you must put a value. Anything you put a value, people won't throw away. Uh, in Malaysia, we don't have that problem, but we have plastic bag. Go to the question, plastic bag. Uh, people are very creative. They do plastic bag. Uh, plastic bag. Biodegradable, one is degradable. Two different concepts. One is biodegradable, one is degradable. The biodegradable, of course, the process is bio. Uh, right? The degradable is, uh, uh, is biochemical, it goes to the uh, sun. Uh, it, it, right? But some clever people say, Oh, it's biodegradable. Then they keep throwing everywhere. They expected they throw it today, tomorrow disappear. Mentality that I have a problem when I was a DG. Because we want to make sure that all people use the biodegradable plastic. You headache because if they use the biodegradable, huh? then the, 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 the what they call it, the, 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 the chemical baseline, oxy is it, right? If, if it's thrown out on the field, it degraded to three days because of the sun. But if it's, we, you didn't, uh, the sun does not get to it, it's not degradable. It remains there forever also. 
There's two types of it, eh? So now, you said in Vietnam you practice, uh, what? Plastic bag, you, 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 you prohibit usage of plastic bag in Vietnam? You prohibit, uh, uh, Malaysia, a few, a few, uh, one supermarket did. But I said, informed decision making. Okay. Now the question by the people is, you charge us, you said want to use it into environmental protection, but it goes to the supermarket. People question, where does the money go? Maybe in Vietnam, it was very specific. All the money collected for you goes to the uh, specific fund, green fund. In Malaysia, we don't have that fund yet. So people were questioning the money that we collect us, where does it go? So I'm going to practice that. It's, good. it's a good way of doing things. But the mechanism well informed decision making. How? You see, up front, in Malaysia, it's a market. If you get a plastic bag, you go home, all your waste you put in the plastic bag. Now, you don't have that, but you have to pay. So you see people, instead of getting that plastic bag, they still buy the plastic bag at the back. A zero-sum game. We custom consumer unless twice. Up front you pay if you want. Then you don't have plastic bag, you have to buy the black, the green, the plastic. Last time you use that the plastic bag to put your rubbish and put in your bin because you cannot put rubbish in your garbage, you have to put in plastic. So now goes back, you have to have a mechanism. How? How? First, the mindset of people. Hmm? We don't have a separation at source 100% yet. Uh, the, the waste at the, at the house, you mix. Although the government in, in Kuala Lumpur, in Putrajaya, in, in the Gismila, what they say, you're supposed to sort your waste. But still, I don't think they sort yet. They should collect one day, once a week, recyclable goods, including plastic. In Kuala Lumpur, you wait in front of your house and see what day they come. Twice is the rubbish from the green. One must collect your 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 pillows, your electronic waste, or what they have to come one in each week. So, to so make things short, you have to put in place. Eh? If you do a mechanism, the structure of how the collection are disposal. If you come up with a policy, no, no plastic bag. It doesn't work so much, eh? Because some country already banned uh, for first two years, three years, then the start break can be used. Because they say how to carry uh, my bags. Uh, most of them, the disposal must be good. I don't mind everybody use plastic bag for me, although I'm environmentalist. But make sure it goes to recycling center because that one is a good source of energy for my insulation. High CV. Okay. For example, in Melaka, Melaka, you know, they banned this polystyrene packing. Hmm. Okay, uh, who actually have this authority, the uh, legislative thing? Okay, to hmm. ban because Melaka ban, other state don't ban. So, you know, it's great confusion among the <laughs> the. the, the the public. Okay. By right, by right, under the new act, the Solid Waste Management Act, Act 672, so, is the purview of Department of Solid Waste. But then one they did under local authority law, lah. And authority. So now, because there's not a concentrated effort as yet, that's why, uh, maybe, like I said, because my said is, uh, what Green Tech, uh, they punya motto. They want to go maju, kan? Uh, so they do first. They, they don't wait the federal governments to do one thing good, one thing good for me lah. You can go your own. You can go whatever, as long as it contributes to the betterment environment. Prostering is not good, uh, I mean, you have to go. So we, that's why I think the federal government does not interfere so much. You go. Uh, although we have the law, federal government, but if you want to do it, so don't worry. Uh, Prostering is no good, let them do it, we follow. So, uh, I'm a Malaysian though. Yeah? I'm a Malaysian. Okay. okay. So, um, <laughs> Come on, yeah. I'm attracted with your slides. Uh, I'm attracted with your slide. Okay. Which you mentioned about green business. Yeah. Okay. And as per your slide, you mentioned that uh, 
by year 2030, okay, year 2030, we can generate revenue about 30, uh, yeah. 60 billion. Yeah. Am I correct? Right? Correct. Right. That's under the Green Technology Master Plan. Yeah. yeah. So now, if you calculate simple calculation though, mm. that is from uh, 2018 right up to 2030, about okay. 12 years there. Mm. Okay. So there is a jump from 7.9 billion to 60 billion. Mm -hmm. There's about 52 billion. Correct. Am I correct? So, yeah, that's right. That's right. So the 52 billion, if you just do simple calculation, we generate about 4.5 billion per year to achieve the 60 billion. Mm. My first question is, can we achieve? So if yes, second question, do we have enough resources to achieve that? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> green, bus green business, eh? If you put up, if you put up waste to energy plant, in Kongo, we don't have a waste to energy plant, one. Waste to energy plant costs about one billion, for example, or thousand. How much is already contribution to the economy? Because the plant itself, the plant itself costs about one million for well, for a thousand for a thousand ton per day waste in Kuala Lumpur, minute because Broga causes one point five b, which is stop it, one point five b. There is capital expenditure, not opex yet, yeah? opex take about three four four million. There's one plan now, and green business is not that alone. The green business I mentioned just now, and the green procurement is a green business. You build houses, it's a green business. But provided that, you must have your green cement in there. Uh, station, stationery also green in our government procurement. And then, I just open. Yeah. Ah. So that's the example. So I believe for your answer, yes, you can achieve that. Because the mechanism is there. Remember that I said you, Gita Gite? Huh. Uh, if, if people know the text there, some, when, I also don't know, they don't know. When I came in, uh, when I came in, the advisor with the private sector, you don't know. They go and ask now because it's going to close at 2020. This 2022, but the government is flexy on that. It might it close 2020 the guitar gate, but the government can always extend it. If if your answer just now lah, if your answer, if they find that you cannot achieve it, that's why you have to go the green financing incentive. That is the market enabler. So the. Data and storage must be good. So the people who at EPU uh, or the assembly must have the data yearly. So if you already calculated average this one, if you fall short, then the government must come out with new incentive, new great growth area. If not, you can achieve. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm from Malaysia as well. Okay. okay. Uh, just to check, because uh, just now you mentioned that uh, the federal and the state, some of the things are implemented in federal, whatever, but majority of them are implemented in state. Yeah. So I just want to uh, query uh, our daily life at the building, green building, for example, the toilet, the usage of water. Okay. Uh, are, are there any policies for the builders? You know, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, can be any uh, construction mm. firm uh, when they Im implement or they build the toilet, the toilet bowl. I mean, uh, the toilet, the, the yes. storage tank, uh, uh, recycle water. I know Singapore they implemented very strictly. The government almost have a control of everything. Okay, but in Malaysia, it may recommend the policies for the builders to do it. But how much is being enforced? Mm. Maybe just have to inquire on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, on the, uh, we call it the, the green buildings, yeah. That's what, what I said is a green building index. Uh, but it's a voluntary. Right now it's voluntary green building index. You have to get certification green building, yeah. The green building, the government enforce only for the government building at night. Uh, right now for the utility of electricity. Remember, I was mentioning that they cannot be lower than twenty four degrees centigrade in government building. And we monitor that through the cabinet every every quarterly we report to the to the cabinet which which ministry is the culprit who uses the money eh? now having said that the government also introduced another incentive whereby whereby 
If I come up to the ministry, say I do for you uh, lamping, you change to LED, LED lights. For example, if my utility bill, ministry bill is 1 million per year, when I come in as a private sector, I can reduce you to 500,000 per year. You can go to Ministry of Finance, the ministry, ask them to retain the, the, the another 500,000. But the, the total bill is 1 million. You say 500. So you can go ask next year, you tell the, uh, the Ministry of Finance, you must give me each year still 1 million. The 500 million saving, you discuss with like project, I'm the project, okay, you, you are the government. 70%, I think 30% of the saving. So it shows an incentive for the government building, the operators to reduce the electric on the bill. Yeah? But on the building now, that the, the design, this set actually is a rule of thumb. If you do the design according to GBI, Green Building Index, you as a developer, you as a developer will, uh, will, uh, will uh, got an extra, what do you call it, uh, profit because of your building design. You can save electricity, you save uh, usage of aircon because that's your marketing strategy. Right? You tell this housing they're doing, this, you, 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 you sell, you build 100 houses. You can tell to your consumer purchaser, look, my house is green building index. We also can save the water beauty. Of course, I buy because in the long run, your building material kind instead of you keep your warm air in, warm air, you warm. it's like the tinted overseas guy. Ah, just like that. Government does not do yet. As yet, they didn't do the penalty, the mandatory. Not yet. Like Singapore, also the wrapping. Remember the wrapping? Uh, they are wrapping in Singapore. The wrapper. They also involuntary. Those. Industries who can reduce the percentage of uh, increase the percentage of recyclable in their packing, uh, the Ministry of Environment Singapore will give you uh, medals involuntary because the, 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 the stick is the government Singapore says if you don't there's no decrease no increase of recyclable I'll put in a law, but right now the Singaporean their own incentive they improve improve so there's no need mandatory law to come in. I think that's a better way because it makes the industry to do self regulatory to improve. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Nazri. <laughs> we have time for one more. Uh, morning, Dr. I saw happen I'm from Northern. Two issues I want to bring here. One issue is regarding the plastic bag implementation, and one of the friends mentioned. Okay. Uh, the other issue is uh, uh, IPP. So the first one, we are talking about how could Malaysians use less plastic bag in Malaysia and use a lot of plastic bag in Vietnam. <laughs> I'm wondering, I, is it a bit unfair for the Malaysian tourists, I think. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a met mentality of the trader, your businessman. If we don't provide plastic bag, then we got no choice. We have to bring. So back to the state that where I come from, not mention the name here, the 10 years ago, when government implemented uh, no plastic bag, it started on the weekend first, only Saturday and Sunday. At that time, a lot of the hoo-ha, hoo-ha, no, the hoo-ha, against uh, the voice here and there, the government doing upside down things, no you plastic bag, no, no. And it proves, it proves that the implementation is good, not only for the state and for the environment and for the people in Malaysia and the world overall, for the global warming. So, therefore, subsequently, they implemented every day, no plastic bag. Uh, if you want to use plastic bag, you pay 20 cents. And this 20 cents money collected is transparent. They have a fund managed by the state, certain state. Because they are very scared of the uh, corruption agency. Eh? Okay. okay, that's one thing. Uh, Dato, second question is personally addressed to you. Uh, I think our beloved Prime Minister, when he took over the office, he did mention about the nuclear plant. Ah, yeah. And um, uh, you were the ex. Uh, DG, what is your personal opinion of the nuclear plant in Malaysia? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now the plastic bag is a mindset actually. You see, uh, mindset, uh, one, one example, uh, one example, one, uh, our neighbor, 
have people in, in, in Singapore, and they are very well disciplined. No, 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 they don't throw rubbish everywhere. Come here, throw away, right? Because of the, that's not the law here compared to Singapore. Singapore is a better draconian law. You can, you know, you can, you can, Singaporean here, you cannot take chewing gum also. Ban. There's two ways, right? right? But the mindset is not changed. Because you behave like in, in Vietnam, right? Because the law that they occupy. But it's a mindset. You see the Japanese. Mindset. No law in the country that they go where there's no law compared to their law, still they don't deter. So they say, they always say, probably my, my minister before they say, you must follow Singapore draconian law. Very good, nobody throws. I say, better go to Japanese, change the mindset. Mindset, no law, they still don't throw. Because the way how they educated in the kindergarten. They in the kindergarten, our five years old, six years old, they tell you how to, how to add mathematics. Four years old, five years old, to turn to teach you a, four, a standard one syllabus. But in Japan, they use the basic of living. You don't throw here how to clean the kitchen. That's all. They don't torture you with preparation of your mathematics or science class. No such thing. But I told them that's where the education department must go. It's a mindset. Then only we can strive for this old plastic. You, you like Singapore, like Singapore is a good one, eh? People hunt them, eh? Because the mindset of the people does not uh, in tandem with environment. It's a mindset. When I was a DG, they said, What's the worst challenges that I'm having? Changing people's mindset. That's the worst. My colleague came back from, from, from Japan. Just came back, so his, 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 his son was being punished by the teacher. The teacher said, go and pick rubbish around the schools. Punishment, you know, that school. So after three hours, the, the teacher got worried because the, the son has not come back. Call the parent, please, sorry, sorry, your son has not come back into the class, what happened? What punishment you gave to him? So he said, call it rubbish. You got the wrong punishment for my son. In, in Japan, they call it rubbish, is what is a good way of doing things. I mean, it's part and parcel, go and call it rubbish. So, they search the boy, the boy was in the, in the drain, in the field, collecting rubbish, because the school is dirty. Moral, ethic, different country, different, you know. So, the teacher here thought that is a punishment. In Japan, that's not a punishment. It's a good way of doing things, to collect. You're clever. They want a headache question. Huh? <laughs> I was working in nuclear plant not when I was a DG, but I was the first section of Keta. We're supposed to have nuclear plant by 2030. Suppose then the tsunami comes in, the Fukushima comes in. So we don't know when yet. But all for all intent and purposes, we still do the already because nuclear plant is a lot of technology, you know. Not one time when you say nuclear plant is a generic, but they got the cold water one. Uh, you, you no. So back to this question, it's a pros and cons. Eh? Some people, some of our people says nuclear plant is the solution. It's the solution because it's cheaper to in the long run. But another one said if something has gone wrong, there's no turning back. I've been to Fukushima. The power plant that is destroyed. They asked me to wear all this clothes here, clothes there, all that, and with all the Geico counter here. I go into the plant. But if, if in Malaysia happened that incident, I think we are dead. Because in Japan, all the topsoil along the area, they clean up the topsoil, I think how many inches topsoil. They put all in the plastic bag. To show how dangerous is that. They are very serious. The topsoil. And 40 kilometers, I went there, it goes down. You saw cars, beautiful cars, all lying along the road. Not only that, to it. Or the restaurant, all that, all that. So, back to the question, are we? All, all, for all intent purposes, discussion, uh, research is still on. But we just don't put a figure when. Uh, if Fukushima does not happen, I think it must be illegal. Lah. But Fukushima unfortunately happens. It's not because of the power plant. Huh? Uh, Japanese here, who here? 
because when they build the power plant, the generator for the for the alternate cover to cooling the generator, the genset is lower. So when the uh, what you got, tsunami comes in, the generator set all being flooded. So there's no secondary electricity supply to cool the reactor. That's why it meltdowns. So now you go to Japan, you Fukushima, you saw thick wall along the, I think, how many feet? Huh? When they do the bottling, observe, they said the tsunami wall is only six meters above that. Then that year is more than that. The modeling they didn't expect it. So now along the beach, higher walls is being built to cater for any tsunami. So I can answer your question when, but we'll be prepared because all the fuel, fossil fuel will we run out unless you find a very sustainable renewable energy, solar, wind, geothermal, hydro. Okay? Right? Prof, uh, last question, Prof. <laughs> okay. What? Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Nazri. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please give him a round of applause here. Yeah. It was a very uh, practical uh, sharing, yeah? uh, sharing of his experience uh, heading the various uh, departments in the government sector. And also now, he has now involved himself in the corporate sector. So it's a very good sharing. Yeah? So let me just debrief. Um, listening from Dr. Dr. Nazri, yeah, um, and align his uh, message towards research, in, uh, PhD research. The first thing is he has highlighted in his uh, sharing some key words like market enabler. Yeah. So as a PhD student, while we are working on research. The word market enabler itself is an independent variable. It's an independent variable. The second word that he introduced was policy. He was talking about policy. So what's happening? Policy is also moderator. It, it moderates the situation. Depending on how stringent the policy are. Singapore policies are very stringent as compared to Malaysian policy when it comes to this. Yeah. So, so then the policy can make, uh, can play a role of a moderator. Maybe, you know, we can, we are not technical people like Dr. Shadi. I'm not a technical guy like Dr. Shadi. But what I'm saying is, for a business and management PhD, you can always make a study, conduct a study on the implication of policy. Yeah? The implication of policy towards energy paradigm. You see that policy implication on energy paradigm. What Dr. Nazri has shared with us is actually he was talking about the paradigm shift from where we started, where we are right now, and towards 2030, where we are going. So that's called a paradigm. So a paradigm shift, right? So but then he also introduced another word, policy. So the policy plays a moderating role. Yeah. So we can conduct a PhD on policy, implication of policy on energy paradigm. Yeah. But these are the beautiful words that he has introduced. So gave us a meaning to it. As far as the practitioner is concerned, he has given meaning. Now it's for us. If you are interested, then you go and go look for literature and references to support those meanings. Yeah. And the next one, he also talked about the sustainable goal, sustainable development goal. Where it started off from Copenhagen, yeah, yeah, Copenhagen, and uh, we have some commitment. Not only Malaysia is committed to Copenhagen; every country is committed to Copenhagen, yeah. So we can also conduct research on looking at the the extent of uh, support that the countries has given towards the Copenhagen commitment, or even we can think about remanufacturing towards sustainable and competitiveness. Remanufacturing. I use the word remanufacturing. Today you already have a manufacturing process. Now what we are going to do is we are looking at how can remanufacturing be done 
towards sustainability and also towards competitiveness. So we have two words here, two keywords here. Yeah? And um, finally, Malaysia and Indonesia today has been challenged very highly on this sustainable development goal. January, the European Union came out, the parliament, they came out with a law saying that they are going to ban palm oil import from Malaysia and Indonesia. And this is a serious business for Malaysia. Why? Because we are the second largest palm oil producing country in the world. And 90% of the palm oil export in the world come out from Indonesia and Malaysia. Indonesia is champion, second D. Now why is European going to ban the palm oil? Uh, this is where a research needs to be conducted. Basically, it is because of non-compliance to RSPO, Round Table Supply Chain Palm Oil. Non-compliance. Then RSPO started out from the history of Nestle involvement in Indonesia. Yeah, that is business. That is PhD. That's why you need to go and study. Why? What happened? So you go back to the history, 2010, April, sorry, March 2010, in Indonesia, where Sinar Thomas Company, a major supplier of Nestle, the Kit Kat that you take, right? It's basically palm oil product. And that product, that raw material comes from a company, from Sinar Mas, from Indonesia. Company Sinar Mas is the supplier for Nestle. And Nestle was not involved in anything. No, but it was just the procurement process. It was just the procurement process. And Sinar Mas was a supplier for Nestle. And what happened in the procurement process? Sinar Mas was involved in deforestation in Indonesia, Kalimantan. Extensively involved in it. And what happened? The Greenpeace environmentalists in UK, London, they ban and protest against Sinar Mas. But they did not put any word on Sinar Mas while they were doing the demonstration. They only put their Nestle from Kit Kat to become killer. They put up a demonstration in London, Greenpeace environmentalists, and they say Kit Kat now changed to become killer. And that was basically Nestle. And Nestle had a tough time. Yeah, 2010 March 17th. It came out very bad. And what happened? Nestle took two months to respond to that. Ah, so this is where, as a PhD student, now you can think. He said, well-informed decision. That is another variable to be looked at. Yeah? So it took Nestle two months. In May 15th, only they came back to the public and said, okay, we agree. We will stop purchasing from Sinarmas anymore. We are not going to purchase from Sinarmas because Sinarmas is not audited. So that's where the RSPO started, Round Table Supply Chain, Palm Oil started. And Malaysia, Indonesia all committed to RSPO saying that by 2015, we will be in compliance. But what happened? Malaysia was not in compliance. And January this year, last year, November, they had a discussion in EU, European Union. And this year, January 2018, they decided they are going to ban. Hey, come on. If the ban is going to happen, what is going to happen to Malaysia, our export? We are very highly depending on that. And why do European Union take this nest about what you call palm oil from Malaysia? It is not for keep gas. It is for biodiesel. It's for biodiesel. 30% of the export that's going on from Indonesia and Malaysia is all for supporting biodiesel energy again. Coming back to energy again. Now, now I'm telling all this because I feel that, you know, as I said yesterday to uh, our PhD students, that when you're working on a PhD paper, please work on a PhD paper that really brings an impact to the society, number one, or an impact to the environment, number two, or an impact to the economic. And this is what we call sustainability. The three things he did mention. At the beginning, he did mention what the meaning of sustainability. It's either an impact to the environment, 
either an impact to the society that we operate or an impact to the business. Yeah. So, very well said. Eh? Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Nazri. You have really enlightened us with your practical uh, experience, your experience in the government sector, public sector, as well as private sector. Now, I'll leave it to you, student. Um, please think about it. Again, again, I repeat, don't work on a PhD paper which is not going to bring real value. It should not be just another compilation in the library. It should not be another compilation in, you know, in somewhere, storage. The PhD that you're going to work must bring some form of impact to the society. It must, it must contribute. It must add a value to the existing body of knowledge. Whatever body of knowledge that we have, your work must add value. And that's why I'm saying that in Malaysia University of Science and Technology, in June this year, they are going to pull our handbrake. The university is just going to pull the handbrake of taking in PhD students. Yeah, I'm, and I'm very, very serious about this. Yeah. Yes, today, and this I did share with you, right? Today, we are the highest number of, we have the highest number of PhD students in Malaysia as far as the private university is concerned, 162 students. But I don't take pride. I don't pat my back and say, hey, I've done a great job. No. I am looking at what is the contribution of this student to the society, to the business world, yeah, to the environment. These are the three aspects I look always, yeah. So we had some discussion with the top management and we said that we are just going to pull a handbrake in June and say, hey, enough, PhD. Yeah, students. Let's make sure that each, of the, each and every one of you we make sure you produce a good paper. Let's focus on that. Yeah. Of course, we will still uh, accept students, but maybe after going through some filtration process, a committee will have to filter the, pro the, pro the, the proposal and so on. And once the committee finds the proposal really good, top-notch paper, yes, we may take in. Otherwise, we are just going to say no. Because we are not for profit university, eh, as I keep on mentioning that. We are not like other universities in the Klang Valley. Where for them is money, money, money. They want to make. For us, no. It is not for profit. No one is going to take the money and put it into a pocket. No. So whatever money that we're going to plow it back. Yeah. And we are now looking for QS ranking, world ranking. And now we are in the data input stage for world ranking, going for QS world ranking. So it's a very heavy exercise, and it's going to be an investment of about roughly about four hundred thousand. We are committed for that. Yeah, we are committed for that. So let us together partner and go for the ranking. You and me. We partner together and go for the ranking. Yeah. So that's what we are more interested in. Okay. Now with that note, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Nazri, once again. And uh, sorry, student, each time I listen to this kind of thing, I like to come forward and share my thoughts. Yeah. Just as a summary or debrief of what you have said. Yeah? Um, please remain on stage, Professor. Um, could we please have Dato, Dr. Nasri on stage so we could plan conversation? Thank you very much, Dato. Thank you very much, Professor Prem, Professor Prem Kumar. For the next slot, could you please have the update by Chin Jinghui? 